Welcome everyone to the course of Enzymes and Metabolism. Now today's session is focused on providing you with an introduction to the course and unlike each year where I am responsible for delivering the introductory session, this year your colleagues from year 5 who will also be participating in teaching some aspects of the course will be providing you with an introduction. That being said, I also wanted to discuss some of the housekeeping rules that we need to follow over the next 13 or 14 weeks during which this course will be delivered. And it is important that you take note of these housekeeping rules because if you do so, I firmly believe you will be able to achieve a better grade in this specific course. Now you should note that this year we have made some changes to the enzymes and metabolism course. So, what are the changes in, in the other cohorts? The course had a credit weightage of 3, which has been increased to 4. So, in other words, the course has more muscle this year than the previous years. Something like if you compare the two versions of James Bond, portrayed by Sean Connery and currently that is currently what is portrayed by Daniel Craig. And this increase of credits is because we have added topics related to lipid biochemistry, metabolism and also certain aspects of clinical biochemistry in the form of practical sessions. So, these topics have made the course more interesting and as well as more complete. And I would like to mention here the fact that these new topics were added and suggested by your colleagues from the senior cohorts. So the course has been developed in partnership with faculty and students. So let us move on to the specific needfuls that we will be following or you need to follow over the period of the next 14 weeks during which this course will be delivered. The first most important thing is to ensure that you are always maintaining a connection with me or to ensure connectivity and the best way to do so as we have done previously is to create a whatsapp group amongst yourself i will not be the administrator of the group so you have to add me to the group and my contact details are provided here and the reason we create that group is that is because through this group I can get, get in touch with you quickly. For example, if there are changes in schedule, changes in venues for our meetings, or if there are any other updates related to the course. So you do not have to really open the LMS or the Microsoft Teams app or your calendar app to get any update. You can directly get the update on the WhatsApp. Also, you can share your doubts if you have any during a particular session over this group. Most importantly, most of the time, if you have a specific doubt, you will also discover that your friends and peers also have similar doubts. So, if I address your doubt, I will be able to cater to the needs of the many. 
and that is one of the fundamental use of this WhatsApp group. And as I just said, if I want to reach you quickly, I can do so using this WhatsApp group. But most importantly, you have to keep in touch. Maintain daily and regular connection with me. Also, this is very, very important. Share your problems as quickly as possible. Don't wait till the minute before the exam. If you have some thing that you want to discuss confidentially or independently of your colleagues in the group, you can do so by giving me a call or you can arrange for a meeting using the calendar application. Whichever way possible, you should always maintain connection. Now, I would like to discuss a bit on the delivery mode in this course. And this is very important for you because you need to take note of certain, certain aspects that I will mention here. Each week you will have live sessions because of the unprecedented times. We will be delivering these live sessions using the Microsoft Teams application. Now, these live sessions can be classified into two groups, the lectures and the tutorials. Now, during the lecture session, I am not going to give a complete lecture. What I am going to do, I am going to revisit some of the key concepts from a descriptive lecture that I will be uploading prior to the live session. So let us take, for example, your first lecture is on amino acids. This descriptive lecture will be uploaded onto a YouTube channel that has been created. You can listen to the descriptive lecture on your mobile device or on your laptop, which one you prefer. Take notes. If you have some problems in understanding certain aspects, you record those aspects in a particular notebook. And then you come to the or you log on to the virtual live session. The virtual live session will be a summary of the descriptive lecture that is on the YouTube application. So, if I want to summarize, we will have a descriptive lecture for a topic and then we will focus on the key aspects that you need to really, really remember from that specific topic. Also during the live sessions, we will be discussing questions similar to the ones that you will experience during your assessments. And in doing so, you will be better prepared for your assessments. So please do not miss the virtual live sessions that will be delivered through the Microsoft Teams. I already mentioned about the descriptive lectures. So the descriptive lectures are pre-recorded lectures where the concepts will be described in detail. And what your colleagues used to do is to sometime listen to the lecture at a higher speed. So you can, if you are comfortable with some of the topics, you can quickly go through those topics. Whereas if you have a problem or if you want to have specific clarifications on a specific topic, you can do so by lowering the speed of streaming of the video. And as I just said, these lectures will be available on YouTube. Now, as you are studying, you will have doubts and clarifications. 
and I will urge you to post these doubts or clarifications or questions on the WhatsApp group. As I said before, if you have a doubt on a specific topic, you will find that your friends will also have a similar or many a times identical doubt. So once you post it, your friends have the option to answer to it or if they are not able to answer, I will address that particular doubt that you have. So even outside the classroom or in this case the virtual classroom, you will be able to address any specific doubt very quickly in a smart way. Now each week or in most of the weeks you have tutorial sessions. Now make note of the tutorial sessions because these sessions will be delivered by your senior colleagues from year 5. Now why these sessions are important because during these sessions we will be talking about specific clinical scenarios where we will be applying the concepts that we have learned during the live sessions or the descriptive sessions. So do not miss these tutorial sessions. Also, these tutorial sessions will be conducted in two groups. That means you will be divided into two groups. So please maintain your group. So don't log in to the session of group one if you are in group two and vice versa. So maintain the group discipline, log in and then there will be a particular agenda for each of these sessions which you need to follow in order to get the maximum out of these peer assisted learning sessions and they are really fun. So please make an effort to attend all the sessions that I have talked about here. And one thing I would like to mention because you are coming from high school directly to the university, you need to take responsibility for your own learning. Therefore, if you are not communicating with me or the tutors, we will not be able to help you and this will be detrimental for or detrimental towards your performance in the course. So you need to be careful from the very beginning. And as I said, this year the course has a heavier credit. So please be careful from the very beginning. Now each week there are several one-to-one -one sessions. Now during the one-to-one -one sessions, you will be divided into three groups. Now what is this one-to-one -one session? One-to-one -one session allows you to meet with me and discuss and deliberate upon any specific question or doubt that you have. And remember that you need to maintain you know, proper protocol of wearing a mask and also the aspect of social distancing while attending these sessions. So please again maintain the group. Each group has been assigned in a way that the different protocols of social distancing are applied when the session is in progress. So before coming to such a session, you should itemize your doubts. That means make a list of your queries. Don't make a very long list, a short list. It would also be good if you can communicate amongst yourselves to see what are the common doubts or clarifications that you require that are present in that list. And then when we are talking to each other, 
take notes during the discussion session, which is very important. Once you are back home, reflect how the discussed concepts can be applied to clinical practice or diagnosis. So this is what you should do to make the most out of the one-to-one -one session. And again, as I said, take care of yourselves and take care of others. So maintain the social distancing protocols, which, are, which you are already aware of during these sessions. And in order to do so, you should attend this one-to-one -one sessions in line with the groups that you have been assigned to. This is very important from the perspective of your uh, academic experience in MB at MBRU, that is the aspect of attendance. And I hope, I, I am sure they have talked about it with you guys. For my courses or for my sessions where I am teaching, I just need to I just need you to follow two specific rules. Be punctual, log in ahead of time so that you are able to attend to the session from the very beginning. And also pay attention during the live sessions. Because as I said, we will be discussing question and answers during these sessions. And why I'm telling you to pay attention because the sessions of enzymes, especially the lecture sessions or the virtual live sessions specifically, are scheduled at 8 o'clock in the morning. And many of us may feel a bit sleepy. So you need to have access to some caffeine or any other stimulant so that you can be awake during these sessions. But most importantly, please be punctual and log in ahead of time prior to the session. Now I will, now I will like to talk a bit on how to prepare for the exam, specifically in the course of biochemistry, because many a times I have seen people asking, a biochemistry looks to be difficult. Um, how do I remember? all the information because it has a lot of information that we need to curate and remember. So let us try to talk a bit about how to prepare for the exam. Before I go there, let me talk about the different types of examination that you will experience while you are, while you are taking this particular course. First, every week, your tutors and I will be giving you a formative quiz. This formative quiz will be there in the LMS for you to access and answer. And after you have answered, you will automatically be graded by the software platform on the learning management system. This particular assessment will not contribute towards the grade, towards your final grades. So that's the reason I have written not graded. But let us say you have a quiz of five questions. You are able to answer four of them correctly. The machine will display that you have received a score of four out of five, which is 80% out of 100%. I'm not going to really check if you are taking these quizzes or not. So if the onus is on you to take this quiz and learn from them. If you do not take them, it may be a case that some of the questions in these quizzes are repeated in the in course assessment or the end of course assessment, which I will talk about in a minute. And then you know, you will, you will have the, so you have, uh, you, and then you may have the opportunity to answer them correctly, but if you haven't taken them, 
you may lose marks on those aspects. So be careful and try to address the weekly formative assessments adequately. Now, in this particular course, there are two formative assessments, which I will label them as pre-exam formative assessment. And these formative assessments are scheduled a week before the in-course assessment and a week prior to the finals. Now, these are formative assessments that you have to attend or you should make an honest effort to attend because they will be more or less a mock of the in-course assessment and the finals. So the one before the in-course will be a mock of the in-course assessment. The one prior to the finals will be a mock of the final assessment. And of course, these are again not graded. So they will not be contributing towards your final grade in the course. In week 8, you have the first in-course assessment. And this particular assessment is graded. But if you have diligently address the questions in the weekly formative assessments and the pre-exam formative assessments, I believe you shouldn't have any problem in getting a good mark in the in-course assessment. Then we have summative assessment which is conducted in week 15 or 16 depending on the date that is provided by the Student Assessment and Progression Committee or SAPC. And prior to the summative assessment, we will have a formative assessment, which will be more or less a trial mimicking the content of the summative assessment. So make an effort to attend that formative and I believe that will give you an idea about the summative assessment. This year, we have a new component corresponding to clinical biochemistry, which will be the practical assessment. And this practical assessment, which is in week 14, is graded. Do not worry, we will have enough time to prepare for this practical assessment as well. And this practical assessment will be carried out on the same day as of the as the foundations practical exam. So you will be divided into groups. One group will be acting, uh, one group will be attending to the foundation practical exam, the other group, the biochemistry practical assessment, and then we will switch. But remember this practical assessments are always easy. So again, make a make an honest effort to attend the practical sessions as well as the preparatory sessions for this assessment. We had practical assessment for the first time in foundations last year and the average was above 85%. So as I said, they are easy. They are an opportunity for you to score marks. So don't miss out on the practical sessions or the preparatory sessions for the practical assessment. Now some quick tips of how to study biochemistry and this is something this is uh, new this year I am doing because I get a lot of questions about how to remember the information. Now in biochemistry you will experience a maze of biochemical pathways. It is not possible for anyone to remember all the intricacies and minute details of all the pathways, their enzymes, rate limiting steps. If you are not curating the data that is being delivered. So when, you are, when we go to the part of metabolism, I will urge you to make a table as we go through the different pathways. In any pathway, we will come across certain key enzymes. Sometimes these key enzymes will be involved in catalyzing the rate limiting step. And do not worry about what the rate limiting step is. We will talk about this 
but you need to really remember some of this information that if the enzyme if it is important in that particular metabolic pathway is involved in catalyzing the rate limiting step or not so let us take the first metabolic pathway that you will experience in this course and that particular metabolic pathway is glycolysis the first enzyme in glycolysis is hexokinase do we need to remember this the answer is yes so you need to have this in your chart i have already created this for you so name of the enzyme is hexokinase the step catalyzed by hexokinase is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and as I mentioned, is this a rate limiting enzyme for the process of glycolysis? The answer is no. And then you have a section called specifics of note. So first, what does this enzyme do? It facilitates the trapping of glucose in the cell. And the important aspect is that it has similar identity for an enzyme which is present in the liver which is known as glucokinase so what you now need to write here is to correlate the function of hexokinase with that of glucokinase so in a pathway we may have one enzyme sometimes we may have two enzymes when you are talking about a specific enzyme in that particular pathway it will be the rate limiting enzyme or the enzyme that is responsible for catalyzing the rate limiting step. So if you have a chart like this prepared, by the end of the course, you will have a quick reference to which you can refer to prior to the examination. And you don't have to go through your notes or anything. You can just refer to this particular chart and you will be able to recall the key aspects of any metabolic pathway. The other thing that you will see in this particular course is the application of the biochemical concepts. And this is something I think some of you have problems with sometimes that you are able to remember the information, but you are not able to apply the information. And I will tell here that all most of the questions, not all of them, most of the questions that you will experience in this course will be of clinical application type. And that is the main idea of studying biochemistry. Just by recalling a certain fact doesn't allow you to understand a specific disease. So this year I am trying to, I am going to recommend something and this is a recommendation only. So if I want to see how I apply specific concept of biochemistry to a clinical case or scenario, I can use certain books and these books are mostly describing a certain clinical scenario and then asking you a specific question. Now I have listed few books here, don't take it from me that I am adv advertising for these books, but these are the books that you will find with your seniors. So you can borrow them and have a look at them. You will not be able to answer all the questions, but please look at those questions which have a clinical vignette or a clinical case associated. And then try to reflect on how you can use your understanding of biochemistry to solve a particular question related to a particular clinical case. And these are the two books which are very common and I believe uh, you will find some of them in the library as well as some of them with your seniors which you can refer to while you are preparing for your assessment. That's it for my, from my side. So I think I have given you an idea of the teaching mode, the assessment mode, 
in this specific course. Most importantly, you should always keep in touch. Please share your problems early. Don't keep it to yourself. We are here to help you. So that's the reason I have written here. Get support from your instructor and peers. We are here to help you as much as possible. But if you do not come to us with your problem, we will not be able to guide you or help you out. With that, I will now end this specific session. Once you listen to these sessions, if you have any specific query, comments or clarification that you want, communicate with me either on email but preferably using WhatsApp because I will or I can respond to you immediately. With that, I end this specific session. I wish you all the very best and I hope together we will have a learning and stimulating experience. Have a nice day and goodbye.